My beloved child imagine realizing that the major betrayal you thought was a random act of cruelty was, in fact, meticulously orchestrated, planned by the very people you trusted. Many didn't even make it to your breakthrough moment, because they were never meant to. They were distractions, designed to derail your path. But what happens when the mastermind behind it all is closer than you think? Stay with me, because what I'm about to reveal will change the way you see everything. Someone really thought they could take something from you, whether it was a material item, money, your energy, or your time. They genuinely believed they could get away with it, thinking you wouldn't notice. This person had the wrong impression of you. They saw you as naive, someone they could manipulate and outsmart, never expecting you to stand up for yourself. They hurt you in the process, and while losing whatever they took stings, what really bothers you is the betrayal, the fact that they could stab you in the back and assume you'd do nothing about it. Despite the pain and the betrayal, a part of you still wants to fix things. It's not easy for you to let go because you're sentimental, and your relationships mean the world to you. You're selective about who you allow into your life, which makes this situation hurt even more. But your desire to mend things shows just how deeply you value your connections, even when others don't treat them with the same care. The winds whispered, and the cards revealed the truth. The Ten of Swords lay before me, gleaming in the dim candlelight, each blade reflecting a deeper wound than the last. This was no ordinary misfortune, it was a tale woven through betrayal, deceit, and profound loss. But this wasn't an accidental fall from grace or a simple mistake of fate it was a grand orchestration. The card spoke with a weighty voice, heavy with the burden of revelation. The major betrayal was meticulously planned, crafted in the shadows by many hands. Forces conspired behind the scenes, pulling strings with precision, each move calculated to bring about your downfall. This was no chaotic event it was an intentional, deliberate act, masked by false smiles and hidden motives. The truth, now illuminated by the Ten of Swords, revealed a deeper, darker plot that had long been buried in secrecy. The swords pierced the back of the fallen figure, one after another, each one representing a trust broken, a belief shattered. You trusted them, believed in their intentions, but there was always something lurking beneath the surface something you couldn't quite see. The plot ran deeper than you imagined, involving people you thought were friends, colleagues, allies. And as the knives were driven in, one by one, you fell to your knees, trying to understand how everything unraveled so quickly. They were not all strangers, the Ten of Swords seemed to whisper as it unraveled the painful truth. Many didn't make it to your inner circle, but they longed to be there. They watched you, some with envy, others with silent resentment. The masks they wore slipped when you weren't looking, revealing their true intentions. Some betrayed you outright, acting with malice and deceit, while others stood in the shadows, too afraid to speak up, yet complicit in their silence. Their lack of action, their choice to turn away, was as much a part of the betrayal as the blades themselves. This was not just an act of betrayal it was a web of complicity, where silence became just as harmful as the words and actions of your enemies. Behind the betrayal, hidden forces moved like shadows in the night. The tower card flashed briefly in the candlelight, reminding you that this upheaval, though devastating, was necessary. The fall harsh and painful wasn't meant to break you, but to strip away the false foundations upon which you stood. What you had built wasn't as stable as it appeared. This destruction was deliberate, clearing the path for something far greater, though in the moment, you couldn't see that through the haze of fresh pain. Those who didn't stay, who fell away in the aftermath, they were never meant to remain. As the tower crumbled, it took with it the people, connections, and illusions that no longer served your highest good. And then, the wheel of fortune turned, offering a glimmer of hope in the darkness. Your journey doesn't end here, the wheel whispered as it spun. This is merely a shift in your fate, a necessary turn in your path. Though it feels like a bitter end, this moment marks the beginning of something new. The betrayal, as cruel as it seemed, was orchestrated to reveal the truth to show you who was real, who was loyal, and who wasn't. The wheel has set things in motion, and your destiny is now aligned with those who are meant to walk beside you, not those who sought to undermine you. Judgment emerged from the deck, its presence commanding a moment of deep reflection. It called for you to rise, not just physically, 
but spiritually urging you to look back on all that had transpired and to confront the wounds of betrayal head on. This card wasn't about condemning yourself for misplaced trust, but about awakening to a higher understanding. Forgive yourself, judgment whispered, for trusting where trust was not earned, for giving where it was not deserved. This is your time to awaken, to reclaim the power that was siphoned away during the moments of betrayal. Judgment reminded you that the orchestrators of your downfall will face their own reckoning in time, for no action goes unanswered in the grand design. But your focus should not rest on them, for their fate is out of your hands. What matters now is your rise, like a phoenix reborn from the ashes, stronger and more luminous than ever before. The path forward, the cards whispered in unison, is not as dark as it seems. What you lost was never meant for you. What you gain will be beyond what you've ever imagined. The time of reflection is ending, and your ascent begins now. Judgment is not the end, but the start of a new chapter one where you stand tall, renewed in wisdom and strength. The worst has passed. The swords may have fallen, but so will your enemies. Keep your heart steady, for the star now shines, guiding you toward healing and new beginnings. This betrayal, orchestrated as it was, will no longer define you. The cards settled into silence, their message clear. The pain was real, the betrayal calculated, but you are rising again stronger, wiser, and ready for what's to come. You didn't expect this betrayal from someone you allowed to get so close to you. This individual, perhaps a friend or a family member, had gained access to your innermost world, only to shock you profoundly by stabbing you in the back. The act was not just a personal betrayal, but a deep violation of the trust and affection you had extended. Despite your initial impulse to salvage the relationship, you now find it impossible to reconcile. Their actions have clearly demonstrated their true colors, exposing how little regard they had for you despite your unconditional care and investment. You had poured so much love and trust into this person, believing that your bond was strong and genuine. The realization that they could betray you so callously, especially after you had been so vulnerable and caring, is profoundly painful. The depth of your hurt is magnified by the fact that this betrayal involves someone you value deeply whether a close friend or a loved one. In some cases, the situation might have been even more complicated. With the King of Cups reversed, there's a suggestion that this betrayal may have involved your ex or someone you were romantically involved with. The complexity of the betrayal, possibly involving romantic entanglements or personal connections, further underscores their lack of integrity and highlights the emotional turmoil you're experiencing. The betrayal was not just a momentary lapse in judgment, it was a revelation of their true character, a deep and painful acknowledgement that they were never deserving of the trust and love you offered. This situation is incredibly tangled and painful. The betrayal you're grappling with is not just deep but cold-hearted and selfish. It's evident that the person who betrayed you crossed boundaries in a way that feels both personal and shocking. They didn't just harm you, they actively sought to undermine a relationship or connection that was important to you. This interference whether it involved a friend, an ex, or someone you were emotionally involved with has left you reeling from the magnitude of their betrayal. It's clear that for some of you, this betrayal led to the loss of two significant people in your life. The more I delve into this energy, the more it reveals the specific pain you're enduring. You've been hurt by someone you trusted, and this person's actions were driven by envy and competition. They wanted what you had, whether it was your relationship, your success, or your happiness. Despite the love and care you extended to them, they were driven by a selfish desire to take or ruin what was yours. This person, who may have seemed close and dear to you, turned out to be incredibly different from what you expected. While you embody love and generosity, they revealed themselves to be cunning and self-centered. They might have admired you from a distance, but their admiration was tinged with jealousy and a desire to compete with you rather than celebrate you. This realization that not everyone shares your values, heart, or moral compass can be harsh. You are someone who loves deeply and unconditionally, and this betrayal starkly contrasts with your own capacity for genuine affection. The person who wronged you, on the other hand, is more invested in their own ego and self-interest than in any meaningful connection with others. Their actions have exposed a painful truth. Not everyone operates with the same integrity and depth of feeling that you do. This realization is a tough one, 
but it's crucial for understanding the nature of your loss and the people involved in it. Yes, it sounds like you're dealing with someone who exhibits classic narcissistic traits, someone whose world revolves around their own desires and happiness, with little regard for the impact on others. This person's actions and behaviors reflect a deep-seated self-centeredness. They thrive on drama and chaos, and their competitive nature drives them to undermine others rather than celebrate them. This individual might be very adept at disguising their true intentions, presenting themselves as a friend or ally, but their actions reveal a much darker side. This person seems to have an almost unhealthy obsession with you, a dynamic that complicates their behavior. They are drawn to what you have and who you are, but their admiration manifests as competition and sabotage rather than genuine support. It's as if their attraction to you is conflicted and twisted, leading them to act out in ways that are both hurtful and destructive. They may not even fully understand or admit their feelings, but their actions suggest a deep-seated envy and confusion about their own emotions. The Two of Cups symbolizes the depth of your feelings, how you've invested in this relationship with love, respect, and care. You've wanted this person's happiness and have extended your genuine affection towards them. However, the lover's reversed indicates a distorted form of love on their part. Rather than reciprocating your genuine feelings, they harbor resentment and hostility masked as jealousy. This reversal points to a perversion of what should have been a bond of mutual respect and affection, turning into a dynamic of hidden hostility and perhaps even hatred. So despite your clear intentions and deep connection, this person's true feelings are not just unrequited but deeply negative. Their love, if it can be called that, is tainted with hatred and resentment. This contrast between your loving intentions and their hostile actions highlights the deep chasm between how you perceive the relationship and how they've chosen to act. This realization is painful but necessary for understanding the extent of the betrayal and the true nature of this person's impact on your life. Yes, it seems this person's actions were driven by a deep-seated jealousy and resentment towards you. Their inability to stand your happiness and contentment likely stemmed from their own insecurities and dissatisfaction. Despite their outward appearance, they are struggling with their own low vibrations, encompassing jealousy, bitterness, and a lack of emotional fulfillment. Your joy, your ability to find happiness even in less than perfect circumstances, and the positive energy you radiate became a stark contrast to their own emotional state. This person's envy grew to the point where they not only wanted to be like you but sought to diminish your happiness. They wanted to interfere on an emotional level, targeting your sense of contentment and joy. This deep-seated hatred, while perhaps not always overtly expressed, has led them to undermine you in the most personal and hurtful ways. The idea that you embody happiness and love while they are mired in negativity creates a potent mix of resentment and longing in them. Their attempt to bring you down, to see you sad, reflects their own struggle with inner turmoil and inadequacy. They might be a Pisces or Gemini, or simply someone who, despite their apparent charm or superficial qualities, lacks the depth and emotional stability you possess. Your ability to attract positive attention remain joyful, despite their attempts to interfere only exacerbates their feelings of inadequacy and frustration. However, this situation is not without purpose. The betrayal and the pain inflicted by this person have been catalysts for your personal growth and awakening. They have forced you to confront harsh truths about the nature of some relationships and the motivations behind people's actions. This upheaval, as painful as it may be, serves a greater purpose, to clarify the nature of your connections, to reinforce your self-worth, and to allow you to rise above the negativity. The pain you've experienced is leading you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your own resilience. And as difficult as it may be to see now, this experience is paving the way for greater clarity and eventual healing. Everything that's happened has a purpose, and in this situation, someone has truly revealed their colors. You might have sensed something was off, but now it's clear. Even if it feels like multiple people have left your life, Understand that their departure is making way for new and better things. This recent betrayal or drama is part of a process of letting go and moving forward. There's a significant new beginning on the horizon, and this pain you're experiencing is shaping you into a stronger, higher version of yourself. You're about to step into a transformative phase, one that will bring in blessings and a renewed sense of self-worth. 
Embrace the pain and allow yourself to fully experience it. Don't try to ignore or push it away. Now is the time to face and heal from it. This period of solitude and soul searching is crucial for your growth. Enjoy this time alone, as it's preparing you for a period of rapid change and increased attention. You might find yourself in the spotlight, with dreams coming true, especially if you're involved in modeling, acting, or any field that puts you in the public eye. The Empress and Star cards indicate that you are about to attract significant attention and that your life is about to transform dramatically. It's not a matter of if you will be tested in life, it's a matter of when. Everyone will face trials at some point, and everything you've learned will be put to the test. The real question is, can you trust God to guide you through these tests, knowing that He is refining and developing you over time? While nobody enjoys being tested, it's essential for growth. You can't move forward without being challenged. So, let me ask you, have you ever been tested by God? There's a key difference between testing and tempting. God tests us, but He never tempts us. Testing is a process of refining. When God tests you, it's to strengthen areas of weakness, to certify and fortify you, helping you grow in your faith and character. You don't need to fear when God reveals a weak spot, because He's working to help you overcome it. On the other hand, the enemy uses temptation to exploit those same weak areas, with the aim of destroying your future, your relationships, and your testimony. As Warren Wiersbe says, a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Think about it, would you board an airplane that had never been tested? Or allow a doctor to perform surgery on you if they'd never passed a medical exam? In the same way, God gives us trials and tests to ensure our faith is genuine and resilient. James 1 verse 13 reminds us that God does not tempt anyone with evil, nor can he be tempted. While the devil seeks to tempt us into sin and lead us astray, God tests us to strengthen our faith, to help us stand firm, and to draw us closer to him. This is one of those moments of testing we all experience. What God desires is to make our faith both strong and pure. It's important to trust Him during these times of trial. In the Bible, a test is not just a random hardship. It's a refining process designed to purify and prepare your heart. You're constantly being tested, prepared, and shaped by God. If you miss this truth, you'll see life's challenges as random problems you just want to avoid. You might try to escape from every difficulty. No one looks forward to being tested, but if you understand that God is like a master weaver, using every circumstance to work for your good, you'll start to see purpose in your struggles. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And when that endurance is fully developed, you'll be mature and complete, lacking nothing. As it says in 1 Peter 1 verse 7, the trial of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus returns, don't you want your faith to be like refined gold? For that to happen, God will allow your faith to be tested by fire. Some of you may be going through that fire right now, facing trials that feel overwhelming. But remember, God has no intention of harming you. His purpose is to reveal whether your faith is genuine, because tested faith is far more valuable than gold. When your faith is tested, it will grow and be refined. Amy Carmichael once took her girls to watch a goldsmith at work, and she pointed out that the refiner never leaves the gold while it's in the fire. In the same way, during every trial you face, your Savior is always present, even when you cannot see Him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your faith will be tested. And when it is, it will be strengthened and purified. Tested faith is authentic faith. When your faith proves to be genuine through testing, it will lead to praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The very trial that causes you pain, sorrow, and grief today will ultimately bring praise, glory, 
and honor when you stand face to face with Jesus. As Job says in Job 23 verse 10, when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. He knew that after the trial, God's testing would make him better. James 1 verse 3 tells us to consider it joy when you're in a trial. That's not easy at all. But Paul reminds us that God's power is perfected in weakness. Do you believe that even something difficult, tragic, or traumatic in your life can be used for good by God? When you truly believe that, you take away one of Satan's key weapons, doubt, and place it back in God's hands where it belongs. Believing this changes your story. Testing reveals the true depth of your faith. Your spiritual faith must be tested in real-world situations. Remember this God will always provide a way for you to pass the test. The Lord will provide. You don't have to cheat, lie, or steal. All you need is to trust God because He will provide the way forward. With every setback heartache, moment of loss or disappointment, times when I may have doubted or questioned what God was doing, he was always working with intention and purpose behind the scenes. One of the primary ways God helps us grow is by testing us. Think of it like working out in a gym you test your muscles by lifting weights, and the more weight you lift the more it strains and builds your muscles. In the same way, God builds your character through a series of tests. Faith, much like a muscle, only grows stronger when it's tested and strained. When you work out, your muscles develop tiny tears. As your body heals, those muscles grow back stronger, filling in the gaps. That's how faith operates too. God places us in situations that stretch and challenge our faith so that, through the process, it can grow back even stronger. While we may not always enjoy this process, I've seen it happen enough to believe it's how God often works. Strengthening our faith is a priority for him, and he's committed to the task. A test isn't designed to make you fail. Just like teachers test students to reveal their knowledge and strengthen their skills, God's tests reveal what's already inside of us and help us grow stronger. James reminds us of this truth when he writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Tests are meant to build us up, not break us down. Trials and tests build perseverance. They make you stronger and reveal strengths you didn't even know you had, those moments where you think, wow, I didn't realize I could handle that. They also strip away what's unnecessary, like refining raw ore. Just as ore is placed in a furnace to burn away impurities, trials burn away the things we don't need, leaving behind what is pure and valuable. James talks about becoming mature and complete, not lacking anything. This requires a shift in how we view difficult times. Instead of asking, what is God doing to me, we should be asking. What is God trying to build in me? What does he want to strengthen in me? It's never an easy process. Strength doesn't come the easy way. As the saying goes, a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. God wants you to have faith that you can rely on. He wants you to know that your faith is dependable. So while God will never tempt you, he will certainly test you to build that trust and strength. That's what it's all about. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. It's no wonder you'll rarely find a strong person who hasn't faced a difficult past. When God is preparing to shape you, he often allows tough situations to come your way. These challenges will make you sweat, hurt, and push you to your limits, but they are refining you from the inside out. When you're going through trials and can't control your circumstances, Focus on controlling what you can, your mindset and your attitude. It's been said that a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You won't get far unless you change it. So, don't let anger or rebellion take root and turn a bad moment into a bad day, or worse, a bad life. 
Some people hold on to bitterness and never forgive, and that resentment can transform a tough moment into a prolonged season of struggle. You don't have to let one bad moment define your life. Instead, make the necessary changes within yourself. Pray, God, test me, refine me, and remember his words. You must endure many trials for a little while. It's temporary, it's just for a moment. Stay focused, stay strong, and endure. Let God guide you through your trial, and while you're in the midst of it, it's crucial to seek his perspective. During testing, it often feels like the heavens are closed, and you can't hear from God. Have you ever experienced that? Going through a tough time, desperately wanting to hear from him, but feeling like there's only silence? That's because when you're taking a test, the teacher often remains quiet. In those moments of testing, you might not hear or see any changes, but you need to trust that even in the silence, God holds you in his hand. God knows your struggles. He sees when you feel like you can't go on, and he knows when you're overwhelmed. Don't lose hope, help is on the way. As the Bible reminds us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, keep standing, just focus on getting through today. You don't need to worry about tomorrow, you'll have the grace you need when that day comes. Trust God in these testing seasons because he hasn't forgotten you. Don't misinterpret the silence or the struggle as God's absence. On the contrary, the word test in Hebrew means to look closely at or to choose. If you're being tested, it's because God is paying close attention to you, preparing you for what's to come. God sees the challenges of tomorrow and uses today's tests to prepare you for them. So, trust that he is fully engaged in shaping you for the future he has in store. How are you being tested today? Is it an emotional struggle you're facing? Maybe it's physical. Perhaps you're feeling your patience stretch to its limits. A powerful question to ask God is, Lord, what is this test for? How am I being tested right now? And it's even possible to thank him. Thank you, Lord for considering me worthy of this test. The Bible says to consider it pure joy when you go through trials, and though it may seem difficult, it's a moment to lean into the test you're facing today. One key element in this is trusting God's timing. Often, the real test is not so much about your faith as it is about your patience. Can you trust God's process to shape and refine you over time? Many of life's tests come down to this, waiting. And when we get impatient, whether it's about a spouse, a job, a breakthrough, we realize it's not that our faith is being shaken, but that our patience is being stretched. When you have nothing, and you still choose patience, you reveal the strength of your character. So, when you're in that season of waiting, remember, God isn't just making you wait for the sake of it. He's developing your character. He's refining you, removing the parts that are unrefined and preparing you for what's ahead. You may be in the midst of a, when, test right now, asking, when, Lord? When will you fix this? When will you resolve this issue? When will you bring clarity to my relationships, finances, or health? The waiting seems endless, but know that God's timing is perfect. The question isn't just, when, but also, how, he's using this time to build something greater in you. Faith means waiting on God's timing without knowing exactly when it will come. If you've been waiting a long time for your prayers to be answered, whether it's for a child, a spouse, a job change, or anything else, remember to be patient and trust God's timing. Even when it feels like nothing is happening, God is always at work orchestrating things for the good of those who love him. Our role is to keep our faith strong while God is working behind the scenes. Think of Joseph, who spent time in the pit, a difficult and painful place. Yet, the pit had one silver lining, it forced him to look up. And just as God reached down to rescue Joseph, he will also reach out to help you in your struggles. 
It's important to remember that while God's timing might not align with our own expectations, He is never late. You might be feeling weary and doubtful now, questioning whether things will ever get better. But don't give in to those doubts. The test you're facing isn't forever. God has already planned an end to your struggles. You need to find your renewed strength and keep going. God didn't bring you this far just to abandon you. What he began, he will complete. Continue to stand firm in faith, hold on to his promises, and trust that what you need is on its way. Even when you can't see any signs of progress, keep believing and stay in an attitude of faith. Faith involves waiting for God's timing even when the end isn't clear. It means hoping for a miracle without knowing the process, trusting God's purpose without understanding the reasons, and persisting despite uncertainty about the duration. Every challenge you face is part of a test. No matter where you are or what you're going through, remember that with Jesus by your side, you have what it takes to pass this test. Imagine if you were assured that whatever you did for God's glory would succeed, what would you undertake? Once you identify what that might be, the crucial question then becomes, why aren't you already pursuing it? Fear is often the greatest obstacle, and the Bible frequently reminds us to fear not. Fear can prevent us from following God's calling. To truly grow, we must confront our fears. So, do you value personal growth enough to face your fears, or are you letting your fear of failure keep you from moving forward, even if it means remaining stagnant? Growth inherently involves risk, and risk brings fear. The choice is clear. Confront your fear or avoid it and remain passive and stagnant. Often, we seek reassurance and a guarantee that everything will be all right before taking a leap, but God rarely provides that guarantee up front. True growth occurs when we are willing to take a step of faith without certainty. It's about trusting God and moving forward despite the uncertainty. To grow, you must push beyond your comfort zone. The fears you avoid become your boundaries. Think of fear as an invitation to evolve, to expand beyond your current limitations. It's a call to explore new possibilities and to grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. The Holy Spirit is most active when you step outside your familiar zone. You need to confront your fears now, rather than postponing them with promises of, someday, that never seem to materialize. Anything you're hesitant about or reluctant to do often gets deferred indefinitely, but it's essential to act today. God is telling us, you won't live forever. This means that real growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. I firmly believe that growth always begins where your comfort ends, there's no convincing me otherwise. Every Sunday, I still feel uneasy standing up here, but I push through because growth and faith often lie beyond our comfort zones. Many people, driven by fear, busily stick to what's comfortable to avoid stepping out in faith. So. What would you undertake for God's glory if you knew it would succeed? The only way to find out is to take the leap. When you sense God calling you to something, the only way to confirm it is to act. Naturally, it must align with his word and it helps to seek counsel from fellow believers if you have doubts. But if you find yourself asking, what if it doesn't work, consider this, what if it does? When I was a teenager at camp, I remember standing at the back of the worship service when Coach Bo Lee told me, Boy, when the singing is over, I want you to preach. I was stunned. Preach? In 45 seconds? I asked. Yep, he replied. I told him, Coach, I've only been a Christian for a couple of years and I'm not comfortable speaking in front of people. He retorted, Comfortable? Did you think Daniel was comfortable in the lion's den? Or Paul and Silas in prison? Or Jesus on the cross? What should I talk about? I asked. Coach Lee simply said, talk about Jesus. Talk about John 3 verse 16. Go. So, I did. I preached a sermon on John 3 verse 16, and a lot of kids came to faith. As I left the platform, Coach Lee pointed at me and said, when you teach the Bible, I see two things, you come alive, and they come alive. Then I had to sit down with my dad, who wasn't a believer at the time, and tell him I wasn't going to medical school, 
I was going to seminary. He asked, what seminary? I explained, it's preacher school. His response was, preacher school? You only work half a day a week and study one book. Why do you need a whole school for that? I shrugged and said, I don't know. They make you go. And I went ahead and did it. If you place your trust not in your circumstances, because honestly, who knows how things will turn out, but in him, that's what truly matters. We can't predict the future, right now, we only see things dimly. So how do you figure out what he wants you to do? My approach to understanding God's call is simple. Pray, make your best guess, and take action. Pray, guess, and go. When making that guess, it's crucial to stay grounded in God's word and surrounded by his people. Follow what he tells you. In John chapter 3, Jesus compares following God's will to the wind. You can't see the wind itself, only its effects. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You can feel it and observe how it changes things, but you never actually see the wind. It's only when you set sail and let the wind guide you that you experience its power and direction. If you could accomplish anything for the glory of God with the certainty of success, what would it be? Once you have an idea, don't just listen to the word but put it into action. It's time to move beyond merely hearing and start doing. I frequently remind people, especially the younger generation, which growth doesn't happen in comfort, it happens when we're stretched and challenged. Today, I believe this message is for me as well, God is pushing us out of our comfort zones. Scientists and psychologists agree that remaining in comfort zones stifles growth in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. For example, when an eaglet is developing, the parent eagle removes feathers from the nest to make the eaglet uncomfortable, encouraging it to spread its wings and learn to fly. Similarly, God uses discomfort in our lives to teach us to soar. Growth starts at the edge of your comfort zone. You need to let go of your comfort and be willing to step into the unknown. Success often comes from venturing into discomfort, so embrace the challenge of being uncomfortable. God's call isn't about staying in the familiar, it's about taking bold steps of faith. While he doesn't promise comfort, he does promise the strength to be courageous. Today, I'm here to urge you to step out of your comfort zone, the boat of comfort. God is calling you to move beyond your familiar boundaries. He wants to stretch you, help you grow, and push you to achieve more than you think possible. For some of you, God has given you a vision or dream, perhaps years or even decades ago but you're still clinging to the safety of the boat because it's comfortable. Remember, God doesn't call you without also equipping you with the courage to act. It's time to leave the boat behind and pursue that dream. Just like Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water, you too need to take that first step. Some of you might be waiting for God to part the sea before you make your move, but God is saying, step out, and I will part the sea. Faith involves setting bold goals and trusting in a limitless God. It's about committing fully and believing that God is working behind the scenes to make things happen. We're not here to play it safe, we're here to take risks. I've always been drawn to adventures, and I encourage you to ask God for a bold vision, a dream of how you can align your life with his plan to make a significant impact in the world for his glory. Then, go after that dream with everything you've got and witness the results. It's easy to settle into a comfortable life with things that fall short of God's best for us. We know there's more potential within us, but we often hesitate to stretch ourselves or take risks. We worry about what might go wrong. What if the door doesn't open or the plan fails? We can become complacent with negative influences, unhealthy habits, or feelings of self-pity, always focusing on what we've missed or how we're disadvantaged. The danger of staying in our comfort zone is that we miss out on our true destiny. When God is calling you to a higher purpose, there will be a choice to make, comfort or calling. Will you stay where you are, avoiding challenges, discipline, and fear, or will you step out in faith, take a risk, and embrace the call? The decision is yours. If you're never stepping out of your comfort zone, you're not truly growing. Growth requires stretching your faith and pushing beyond your limits. The enemy will always try to convince you of what you can't do, but if you ignore those lies, you'll hear a quiet, 
encouraging voice that tells you what you can achieve. You might wonder, what if I try and fail? But consider this, what if you try and succeed? What if taking that step of faith elevates you to a new level and reveals abilities you never knew you had? What if you discover you can do things you've never done before, walk in freedom, lead with confidence, live a fulfilled life? Don't let the what-ifs discourage you from pursuing your destiny. Instead, flip them around. What if God's favor is upon you? What if unexpected opportunities arise? What if you overcome long-standing challenges? The key is to try because if you don't, you'll never know what's possible. Playing it safe offers no rewards. As Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Many of you have the potential to be used in incredible ways, but you hesitate to take the risk. Here's a practical challenge from this parable. Without taking risks for God, there are no rewards from Him. The best things in life come when you step out in faith and embrace the risk of trusting Him. God's greatest works in your life often happen in those moments when you say, I'm terrified to trust you with this, but I'm choosing to step out in faith anyway. If you're never willing to take risks, you won't accomplish much in this world. So rise up, take that risk, make that leap, and take action today. Don't let another day pass without moving forward. We aren't here just to read about others living adventurous lives, we're called to live them ourselves. Think about the irony of our lives, we become content with routines, binge watch TV shows about other people's lives, or play video games about adventures while staying stuck in our own safe zones. We scroll through social media, looking at others' lives instead of living our own. We're meant for adventure, but to embrace the adventure God has for us, we need to shift from routine to risk. Routine can easily become a rut, a series of actions done day in and day out without questioning their purpose or impact. As you approach the end of your life, consider whether you've truly lived the life you were meant to, made the difference you were called to make, and fulfilled your true purpose. We often find ourselves stuck in ruts. When we stay in a routine long enough, it creates a rut, and if we remain in that rut too long, it can become a grave. Many people spend their lives trapped in this mundane cycle simply existing rather than truly living. But Jesus tells us in John 10 verse 10 that he came to give us life in abundance, not a monotonous, predictable existence. So many of us are conditioned to stay safe, to avoid excitement, and to believe that we should not expect too much. This mindset often seeps into our faith, leading us to think, don't expect too much from God. Just stay safe and stick to the status quo. But living in fear and clinging to the safety of our controlled little world prevents us from stepping into the purpose God has for our lives. Faith requires risk. It means doing things we cannot accomplish on our own, things that require God's intervention. The enemy knows that if he can't take our souls, he can at least make us live safe, keeping us from stepping out in faith and fulfilling God's call on our lives. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. If we want to please God, we need to embrace a life of risk and faith. To move forward, we must step out of our comfort zones and stop being content with just reading about other people's adventures. There's a story God wants you to live. What should truly scare us is not taking risks but the regret of reaching the end of our lives and realizing we never stepped out to do what God called us to do. The fear of missing out on our divine purpose and living a life of regret should be our greatest concern.